All right, birds, birds. We are in class aves, which are birds. General characteristics of this class, they have feathers. Birds have feathers, okay? So even birds that interact with the ocean are going to have feathers. Also, most of them can fly. Not all of them, but some of them can't fly. Can, or most of them can fly, but some of them can't. Um, like penguins, like ostrich, chickens, peacocks, that sort of thing, right? So, mm, not well. Not well. So, they, most of them can fly. Okay, they are oviparous, which means they lay eggs, and they have to return to land to lay eggs and raise their young. And if you look at their feet you can, and their beak, you can actually tell a lot about their lifestyle. Okay, so what they're going to eat, how they eat, whether they spend lots of time out at sea or whether they spend more time closer to shore. Okay, um, and then lastly, they're endothermic, meaning they can maintain their own body temperature. So despite the surrounding water temperature or air temperature. So your emperor penguins can live in Antarctica and maintain a body temperature that is consistent despite being in negative 70 degrees Celsius weather. Okay, so they can maintain their own body temperature. It's called being endothermic. Another term that you will hear for that is homeothermic. So homeothermic, endothermic, same thing. All right, so make sure if you see either of those terms on your quiz or your test, don't get confused, okay? Um, we also say animals that can maintain their own body temperature, we say that they're warm-blooded, all right? So birds are endothermic, and you can see different pictures of different types of birds. So we split birds that interact with the ocean into two groups, two basic groups. We have shorebirds and seabirds. Shorebirds interact with the ocean and spend most of their time closer to shore, whereas seabirds can spend most of their time out to sea. All right, super hard to remember. So shorebirds spend most of their time along the shoreline, very, very rarely out at sea, and you can actually tell um, whether the bird that you're looking at is a shorebird or a seabird just by looking at its feet. Okay, so if you look at its feet, um, you can tell. So a shorebird, I'll scroll back up so you can get your notes, but a shorebird, its feet are not going to be webbed. Okay, so it'll, it'll have its toes separated. Okay, so if you, you can all see that on this little, art, uh, little snowy plover, right? Seabirds will have webbed feet. Okay? So just by looking at their feet, you can tell if they're a seabird or a shorebird. I would recommend that you know how to do that. Hopefully it's an easy point on your quiz. Okay? So web feet, seabird. Not web feet, shorebird. Um, and the reason why, like, shorebirds have to spend their time around land um, is because they don't have webbed feet. So because they don't have those webbed feet, they can't land on the water and then take off again. Whereas seabirds have these webbed feet, and so they can land on the water and use those webbed feet to start paddling and get up speed and take off. So shorebirds have to stay close to land. They can't land on water. They have to come back to land in order to rest. Seabirds can go out to sea, land on water, rest, take off again. Does that make sense? Just sitting on top of the water. Yeah. Just like a duck would like float on top of water, they would just sit on the top of the water out in the open ocean. So, um, yeah. And um, kind of interestingly, a lot of shorebirds actually stay in California for the summer or for the winter. So we'll see a lot of birds that we don't normally see during the winter here because this is where they stay. And then when it's summertime, they fly up to the Arctic. So we see lots of different kinds of birds. Their beaks. Their beaks are cool. Um, if you look at their beaks, you can actually tell a lot about what they're going to be eating. So, and their beaks actually also help to reduce competition for food. Because if they have different shapes and different lengths of beaks, they can be eating different things all in the same spot. So here is a picture to help you see this. So this bird all the way here on the left, that's a curlew. It's got a, a long curved bill. It's going to be reaching deeper in the sand and getting things like worms and also clams and stuff that, stuff that lives deeper in the sand. Whereas if you compare that to a plover, okay, all the way here on the right, it's going to be eating amphipods and stuff that are closer to the surface of the sand. 
So these two birds, in fact, all four of these birds, could be eating in the same area, right? But they're eating different things because they're eating at different depths in the sand. Do you see that? So the length of the beak actually helps to reduce the competition for food. Um, and by looking at their beak, you can tell something about what they're eating. It's kind of cool, huh? So there you go. We could spend like a long time talking about different kinds of birds because there are a lot of different kinds of birds. We're only going to briefly mention some of the ones that you'll see in California, right? Because we could spend months on birds. Literally pretty much every topic that we cover in this class, we could spend months and months talking about. But so birds, we're going to just talk about very briefly. One of the types of birds that you'll see here is the oyster catcher. Okay, and you can tell it's an oyster catcher because it'll have black body and then it has orange eyes, beak, and feet. Okay, everything else is orange. It is going to eat things like clams, all sorts of shellfish, limpets, crabs, worms at rocky shoreline. That's what it looks like. It's 18 inches head to tail, so it's, it's going to be about that big. It's a little bit of a bigger bird. Okay, and then here you can see its um, habitat, where it lives. All right. So all the way down from like Baja, California, all the way up to like the coast of Alaska. Curlews, you will see around here, um, only during the winter. So right now, you'd be able to see a curlew. Um, they have this long curved bill that gives them their very distinctive look. They're going to be eating in sandy and muddy habitats and eating things like clams and worms that are deep in the sand. You can see them around the Ventura River mouth or at your local beaches. All right, that's what they look like. And they are 23 inches head to tail, so they're even bigger. They're almost two feet from head to tail, right? So, and then they've got those long legs and the long bill. So they're not small birds. Clovers. There's many different types of clovers. Um, but clovers are going to be small particularly when compared to other shorebirds. They're only going to be about six inches, so they're going to be, you know, like that big. They're going to be little birds, okay? Um, you'll, they're very common on beaches. You'll see them all over, and they're going to eat amphipods and things near the surface. Um, the snowy plover is a type of plover that you'll find here year-round. Um, they live in California, and they are endangered, okay? reason why they are actually endangered is because uh, they lay their eggs on the sand, okay, and because that's, that's where they make their nests, and those eggs are very well camouflaged against the sand. And so when people walk on the beach, step on the eggs and crush the eggs, and so the little baby birds don't hatch. Um, also, the parents are very skittish, so even if you just get too close to the nest, they just like throw up their wings and go away. All right, they're like, oh, that's it, I'm, I, can't, I can't come back can't come back. And so they just like leave and they don't come back. And so the eggs don't make it because they're not being incubated and they don't hatch and it's sad. Poor baby snowy plovers. Um, if you see at a beach a sign that looks like this, okay, that is what they're warning you about. They're saying like don't go in this area because this is where snowy plovers nest. They're protected by the Endangered Species Act and you can be fined thousands of dollars. So don't do it. All right. Save the snowy plover, don't step on their babies, and don't get fined thousands of dollars. Okay, here's what they look like. <coughs> so they're oh, cute. They're so cute. I know, they're adorable. Um, and one that's eating, and then here you can see the um, eggs in the sand. So it's, they're very well camouflaged, right? Okay. Sandpipers. And Sandpipers are one of the types of birds that you will see at the beach that will be running up and down when the waves go in and out. So when the waves go out and they run up, okay, and then when the waves come back in and they run back up, that's, uh, that's one of the types of birds that does that is a sandpiper. Uh, they are mostly here during the winter. They're eating small crustaceans and clams. Here's what they look like. They're six to eight inches depending on the species. So this to like this. Right, so they're not huge birds. Two types that you'll see: the least sandpiper and the western sandpiper. And then here, compared to like the size of a teacup, so you can just get an idea. Yeah, they're little. 
So that's what they look like. Um, Sanderlings are another type that you'll find. They eat crustaceans and clams. Sanderlings are another type of bird that will be running up and down the beach as the waves come in and out. Okay, so they're, and you, a lot of times you'll actually see like flocks of both sanderlings and sandpipers together running up and down. They're eating insects. You can see a picture of what they look like there. Um, and you see them all over the place. All right. They're a little bit bigger. They're eight inches from head to tail. And they're cute too. And it's fun to run through the flocks of them and make them fly away. I mean, I don't condone that. And then our last type of shorebird are herons and egrets. Um, we have an egret that like likes to chill out here, right? So sometimes in the front right here, and then sometimes over by the Calvary parking lot, that big white bird that hangs out, um, that's an egret. So herons and egrets are found like around canals and harbors or like marshy areas that's probably feeding somewhere around here in like Westlake or something like that. Um, they're gonna eat fish and invertebrates. So you'll see them as they like feed, they're like, they'll walk like in the water, like this guy, this heron right here. So they'll walk and then they like will pause and they'll stop and they'll just like stay there for a while. And then you'll see them like shoot their head forward and they shoot their head down into the water and capture the fish or the hopefully capture the fish or the invertebrate, right? Um, so these guys are 42 to 52 inches, the great, uh, the blue heron. So those, oh man, they're going to be like, they're going to be big birds, okay? And then your, um, you have two types of egrets we'll see around here, the great egret and the snowy egret. The great egret, you can tell it's a great egret because it's got a yellow beak and black feet, whereas the snowy egret is sm slightly smaller and then it's got a black beak and yellow feet. Okay, so you can tell the difference that way today. Okay, so seabirds. Seabirds spend most of their time at sea. That's why they're called seabirds. I know, it's weird. Um, they do have to return to land to mate and lay eggs, but like, for example, um, the albatross, albatross babies will actually spend their first two years of life out to sea and never come back to land. So, um, only when they're ready to reproduce after a couple of years will they actually return back to land. The rest of the time they're, they're out to sea flying or like resting on the surface of the water. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Yes, that's a puffin. Their feet are webbed. They are good swimmers. Um, and they can land and take off of water. Iceland. Yeah, puffins are found in Iceland. Their beaks. So you can tell a lot about what a seabird eats and how it eats by their beaks, just like you can with shorebird beaks. Um, you can particularly tell a lot more about how it eats by the by the beak for a seabird. So if you look, here's the picture, a picture to help you see it. So the penguin and cormorant, these first two here on the left, those are pursuit divers. What does that mean? That means that they're like swimming underwater, chasing their prey like fish and krill. Okay, um, so they have very streamlined, sharp beaks. Okay, whereas like the blue-footed booby will actually take and will hover above the water about at about 70 feet sometimes, and then it will plunge, dive down into the water to capture its food. So it's gonna need a much sturdier beak to withstand the impact. It's also going to need more of like a wedge-shaped beak, so like a diver, right? So to kind of like separate the water as it dives in. Um, and then, and so that's, it, that's exactly what its beak looks like, right? More wedge-shaped and stronger. Um, and then you've got skimmers, okay? Skimmers that have a longer lower beak than an upper beak, okay? And th the way that they use that is they'll take and actually glide over the surface of the water and keep that lower bill into the, into the water, right? So they're swimming along, swimming along. When something touches that beak, they slam that beak closed and they capture their food. So by having that longer lower jaw, it allows for them to swim like that and capture their food. 